Hi! Previously we've talked about posting accounts and unit accounts in the general ledger. Today I want to talk about allocation accounts, both fixed and variable. An allocation account is an account that you use to code a specific amount to and then that amount gets distributed to other accounts. So nothing actually ever gets posted to the allocation account. Let's take a look at how it works in the fixed allocation first. So under financial, cards, fixed allocation, I'll pull up my maintenance window. And let's take a look at this utilities expense account. So the allocation account is 000 6190 Now nothing will ever get posted to that account. It's a fake account. So when something gets posted there, it actually is going to get posted to these accounts. And this is how it decides which accounts there are. So to Department 100, 5% will go. To Department 200, 5%. 300, 35%, and so on. And the only rule is you have to have the total equal 100%, which makes sense. This is the entire setup window to a fixed allocation account. Now, a fixed allocation account can be deleted anytime because, again, nothing gets posted there. Let's key in a transaction to the fixed allocation account now and see how it works. So I'm going to go into the general ledger entry and we're going to enter in a reference and I'm going to code a hundred dollars to this fixed allocation account and then we'll code the other side of the transaction to petty cash and let's, uh, let's post close this out and print our posting report to our screen now you can see the allocation account entry here. But we also see the journal entry is 3479. So let's take a look at that journal entry number. Journal entry 3479. And if you look at the actual transaction, you could see that it was coded to all of these other accounts. And the percentages, because I used 100, line up exactly. So this is a great way to distribute information without sitting down with a calculator ahead of time. Now one of the cool things about using a fixed allocation account is it's not a matter of setting it up and that's the way it's always going to be. If you have allocations that change every month, you can go ahead and change them before you post the transaction each and every time. That's one of the nice things about fixed allocation accounts. But if it's changing, if your allocations need to change, perhaps a better option for you is the variable allocation account. So let's talk about how this is set up. Now before I pull that up, let's go back to our units account, unit accounts that we talked about previously. You'll remember we have unit accounts set up by department for each, for the number of employees. And you can see for the month of April, I've populated specific employees. Okay. So back to our variable allocation account. I'm going to set up or create a variable allocation for pantry expense. So every time I buy um, produce and um, pastries for the morning, I want to distribute that expense across all departments based on the number of employees they have. They have. So I'm going to set up a pantry account. Now you notice that most of the allocation accounts start with zero zero and that's because that's typically no, a non-unit account. So I have pantry expense. Now I have a couple questions here. Is it going to be based on year-to-date numbers or transaction period? This one because I keyed in the total number of employees each month and I plan to do that for each month. I'm going to do transaction period. So what I do over here is key in the accounts that will actually be coded to. So the, the transactions that will receive an actual coding is Department 100 and it's going to be based on the number of employees and then I have Department 200 again based on the employee count in 200 and then I have Department 300 and we'll enter the employee count for department 300, 400. Now, one of the interesting things is if you, you could use unit accounts in these breakdowns, and I'll explain a little more how they work, or posting accounts. It could be either one. You just have to be consistent with what you use. If you use unit accounts on one of the distribution accounts, you must use unit accounts on all of the distribution accounts. 
So what will end up happening here is if I code $100 to this allocation account, it's going to add up all the employees and all of the accounts we've listed as breakdown accounts, and then it'll create percentages based on those employee counts. So let's do a transaction now for this. So I'm going to click on Save, and let's just move that to the side of the screen, and we'll key in a general ledger entry. So again, I'll key in, oops, to key in the right account number, I'll key in $100, and again, I'm going to just use petty cash for simplicity. And let's post. And once again, we just see the variable allocation account. You can change it if you use a batch to see the individual transaction accounts if you like. And this is 3480. So we'll come back into journal entry and type in 3480. And now you can see the individual transaction accounts. Now how it came up with this number is it looked at all of the unit accounts for, there you go. It looked at all of the breakdown accounts or unit accounts for employee account came up with percentages accordingly and broke it down that way. So it's an interesting way that you can work. A great example of a variable allocation account is uh, if you are depreciating manufacturing equipment. You might want to perform your depreciation based on the volume of sales for a period. Uh, then that way you are depreciating by department the departments that you've sold more objects of, therefore you probably um, manufactured more of. So that's another interesting way to perform unit accounts. So, I hope this helps. Thanks. Go use those variable allocation accounts.